Well, I welcome all of you, both uh, parishioners as well as friends and family, relatives of the bride and groom today. It's so great to see such a good turnout for this very happy occasion of Matthew and Leanne's nuptial mass. In just a few minutes after the sermon, the bride and groom will exchange their vows, and then the Holy Mass will be started. And you'll notice two, at two different places in the, towards the end of Mass, there will be a pause, and the bride and groom will come up together as a newly married couple to receive the nuptial blessing, a very important blessing that is given only once to the wife. I'd like to read to you, though, the epistle of today's Holy Mass, the nuptial Mass, which you can find in the back of your missiles if you weren't given one of these handouts. It is that of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brethren, let women be subject to their husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of his body, Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so also let wives be subject to their husbands in all things. Husbands, love your wives, as Christ also loved the church and delivered himself up for it, that he might sanctify it, cleansing it by the laver of water in the word of life, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So also ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, as Christ doth the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall be two and one flesh. This is a great sacrament. But I speak in Christ and in the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular love his wife as himself and let the wife respect her husband. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. That taken from St. Matthew. At that time, there came to Jesus some Pharisees, testing him and saying, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for any cause? But he answered and said to them, Have you not read that the Creator from the beginning made them male and female and said, For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and, two, and the two shall become one flesh? Therefore now they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Thus far the words of the Holy Gospel. Please be seated. In the offertory verse of today's nuptial mass, we read the beautiful words, In thee, O Lord, have I put my trust. I have said, Thou art my God. In thy hands are my goods. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You know, I found it kind of odd this morning. I was going through the martyrology that tells all the saints that you honor in one particular day. The saints that we honor today consist of 17 martyrs, one virgin, a disciple of St. Paul, two bishops, two abbots. Of the 17 martyrs, only one was a married woman, but there were seven thieves. They're called the seven holy thieves. I'm not sure what the moral of the story is there, but there you have the story. But Father McKenna, at last week's wedding, he gave a very nice sermon in which he spoke about the symbolism of the wedding ring, how the circle represents eternity without beginning and without end. And so the wedding ring, although for a married couple there is a beginning, there is no end. Till death do you part. So much rides upon the wedding ring, 
It all starts with a ring, and it all ends with a ring. I hope that you'll bear with two little stories that I always keep in mind concerning rings. But if you bear with me patiently, they will, in the end, you'll see the point. When Pope St. Pius X was installed as the newly elected Pope, his mother came and kissed his papal ring. And as, as soon as she had finished that pious action, the mother looked at her son, the new Pope, and said, now son, you kiss my ring, for without it, you never would have received yours. A very thought-provoking statement. The second story happened when once I was tending to a parishioner's deathbed. There was his wife. She was so ill that she could barely stand. She couldn't walk, but praying as best she could. And when I looked down, what did I see but the most touching thing? Their left hands joined. And I looked down and saw their wedding rings still on. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Marriage, it begins with the ring and it ends with one too. Till death do us part. So today it begins the, ring, the rings will be exchanged, as will your vows. And even though we do know that it begins and ends with a ring, what we do not know is what joys or what sorrows will come in between this day and that one. So many people enter this state in life, this marriage, never thinking of these truths. And they enter mostly, if not entirely, for selfish motives. And that's why most of them, many of them in the world, end very badly. But there's always something about marriage that will make you happy. There's a certain selfishness that is a good selfishness in marriage. Today and throughout your marriage, you will be happy together. There will be many days of joy. But matrimony is a life of loving another, even to the forgetting of self. If that's not your purpose in marrying, then it's not for you. There will be days filled with such joys that you hope the day never ends, and then there will be days filled with such sorrow that the day never seems to end. Count on it. It's okay. It's part of life. But it's the teaching of the Catholic Church that in this sacrament that you too are about to receive, you will be given such special graces to help you throughout your whole married life, to bear your trials of your state in life, to love and to be faithful, and to bring up your children in the fear of the Lord. To be faithful for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, as you will say in just a few moments. Now, one of the mutual duties of spouses is this, to love each other. Love has been given a very bad connotation in modern days. Love is nothing more than feelings or even worse. Love comes from the will. Love by its very nature is sacrificial. It is not selfish. That is pride. But love is by its very nature sacrificial. Christ's love for the church is the theme that St. Paul speaks about today in his epistle. How did Christ love his church? Well, unto the end and into eternity. He dedicated himself to instructing, to healing, to preaching. He went whole nights without sleep 
spent in prayer for his little sheep that he was guiding to heaven, only the next morning to meet the crowds following him that day, enormous crowds. But in the end, greater love than this no man hath, that he lay down his life for his friend. Our Lord died on the cross. That's the type of love that the husband should have for his wife. It is a truly beautiful thing. But so much for speaking about the cross. This is a happy day after all. And we're in Paschal Tide. Just as our Lord began a, a new life after dying on the cross, he rose the third day. Today, in a sense, you begin a new life too. And it should be a I want to say a heavenly one, but I mean more of a heaven-centered one. That's the purpose of marriage. That you, the spouses, Matthew, Leanne, that you never beat each other down when you see each other's faults, and there will be plenty of days of that, but that you lift each other up heavenwards by all the graces that you are given in this sacrament. And then, God willing, the children should come, that you become a family of saints, so that one day you may all have a throne of your own in heaven. That's the purpose of marriage. Never forget that. When those hard days come along and you feel like giving up, no, that's when you come closer together. You pray through your problems. You encourage each other through your problems. You receive the sacraments more fervently on those days when there are great trials. That's how you make it. That's how you make it to that last day when death does you part. And that's how you get to heaven. It's a beautiful thing that you are doing today. And we all wish you well and be assured that there will be many more prayers offered for you. All you have to do is ask. But they're always being said for you in any case that you be a good husband and a saintly wife and that you raise together so many saintly children. May God bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.